And if we talk about being the change that you want to see in the world, it's hard to say that we stand for some sustainable food system. And then we find out that the effects of tillage are adding to the climate change issue. It's harming soil health. It's affecting the nutrition of our food. It's like, how do you justify and rationalize that away and just keep doing it? Hi, and welcome to Regenerative Journey. Organic farming relies heavily on tillage, but regenerative agriculture teaches us that tillage is highly destructive to the soil. So can a farm be both organic and regenerative? I think a lot of farmers are trying to answer that question. In this episode, we hear from a farmer about the realities of transitioning his 13-acre farm from an organic operation to a regenerative organic operation. I hope you enjoy the story. Let's jump in. When I decided to go into farming, I never considered not being organic. Like the idea of being a conventional farmer who was going to use herbicides or GMO technology in my crops was not something I was ever willing to do. When we're talking about food, the whole point of food is nutrition. And if you're talking about nutrition and human health, then how do toxins and poisons fit into that model? It doesn't make any sense to me. And so I was just opposed to the whole mindset of it to begin with. So one knock against organic is we're saying we care for the soil and we're not using herbicides and pesticides, but most organic farms are tillage based. And over the years, we've learned that tillage has some really profound negative effects on soil. I think that's where regenerative agriculture came in. It's more trying to push farmers to understand uh, how their practices on the landscape are affecting it. A lot of it comes from the issues that we've seen with traditional agricultural practices. We've done heavy tillage in this country. We know that it burns up organic matter. We know that it's led to soil erosion. Our water holding capacity is vastly reduced. We know our nutrients are being washed out to the Gulf of Mexico and creating a dead zone. And the regenerative movement is really trying to show farmers like, hey, you can make very small changes to what you're doing and have profound effects. The big conundrum, I think, is that a large scale no-till is being adopted, but because farmers can't use tillage to prepare a seed bed to seed into, they've turned to herbicides. So we had this really uncomfortable trade-off of, hey, we got rid of tillage to protect the soil, but now we're dousing it with Roundup. And you're like, well, that doesn't seem like a very good compromise. And at a large scale, that's still the struggle of like, well, if you can't use chemicals and you can't use tillage, we don't know what what are our other options? On a very small scale, there's been a lot of work done, like J.M. Fortier, he really started a movement where he could get away with not doing tillage and not needing chemicals because of scale. He was using compost and silage tarps, ways he could make it work, but they were difficult to scale up. But this middle area, and we're probably on the small end of that middle area, right now there's a lot of work going into like, well, what what's available to us. How do we borrow from both of these scales to do something that works here and we don't want to use herbicides and we don't want to use tillage? Well, what other tools do we have? And I think we're trying to develop new tools. When we started farming, very similar to most, I would say traditional vegetable farms, right? Every year, you kind of start from scratch. You have to prepare your field for planting which typically means tillage. Different parts of the country or different soils, the tools you use will differ, but it's that same process of some sort of plow for deep tillage. Then you're gonna do some secondary tillage. Then some farms just work on flat rows or flat beds. Some use a raised bed like we do. So that's another tillage pass where you're moving soil. And then you would grow a crop on it. And then at the end of the year, you would typically knock it all flat and plant a cover crop, and then the next spring you start over again. And what we realized is like, even when we're trying to minimize our tillage, that's still a significant amount of tillage passes. And so we're trying to think, how do we move away from that? I think the challenge for us at this scale is that we're still experimenting, right? This is year two, can we come up with a system and like each step of the system that works in order to do permanent beds in a way that still produces the quality product that we need. So 
So kind of what I want to point out to you as we walk this, you're going to see like 10 different techniques. Some of them are kind of no-till regenerative. Some of them are some tillage. Some of them are going to be heavy tillage. You're going to see that we're doing all of it, trying to find kind of the best combination. Always trying to move more towards the minimal tillage, no-till. This block was permanent beds from last year, never got tilled. We have carrots and beets and they need to be weeded again. This last week was under the tarp and you had filmed it. So now it's just been replanted with a ground fabric down for Salanova production. And then we have two more beds that were flail mowed, but don't have a tarp. And that's what you don't want to happen is all the weeds just keep growing. So ideally there would be a tarp on that or you would just clean it and replant it. Here's a whole nother block of production that's been spring grown, spring harvest. It's gonna get a tarp for a couple of weeks and then we'll pull the tarp off and we'll try to plant something in here for the fall. So this is really taking care of any of the weed pressure that we have so that it doesn't carry over into the next planting. Again, you could try to take care of that weed pressure with tillage, but that's gonna stir up new weed seeds. So the goal is that this smothers the weeds and doesn't bring up new weed seeds. So these are new beds. They had a spring crop on them. They just got flail mowed. So the beds are still intact. Even now though, it's covered and protected. It's got all that residue on it, which I like a lot better than if I were to come through with a rototiller, which would clean that up really nice. But then I've just degraded the soil structure and I've left it bare and uncovered. So even in its current state, it's at least kind of covered and protected. So then here we have like a traditional fallow. This was a really weedy, grassy section that I didn't want to put into permanent beds this spring because there was way too much quack grass. So I've been doing like a shallow cultivation on it to try to kill off the weed pressure to get it to the point where I can convert it to a no-till. Carrots are a tough one. You could do permanent beds. Ideally, you'll get to a point where your organic matter is good enough in the carrot bed that you don't actually need to destroy the bed to harvest it. Like right now we use an undercutter bar that cuts under to break the tension. But some of the smaller farms that have been doing no-till and heavy compost long enough, they don't need to break that tension. They can literally go in and just pull on the tops of the carrots and pull them out. But we have heavy clay, so our clay wants to kind of lock up and stick. So if you walked over to a carrot plant and just pulled on the top, you just rip the top off and the carrot would stay in the ground. If you can build organic matter up I don't know if you came back in five years and I was hand pulling carrots out of the bed, I'd be psyched. So then this is a block that same thing, it's been summer fallowed because it was really grassy. I think we knocked the grass back. So now we use the bed shaper on this and we shaped the beds yesterday. And then hopefully this block is now permanent, right? We're never going to knock this flat again. So when we talk about transitioning, there's still areas of the farm where we haven't even gone to the permanent bed setup yet. So this block would be one of them. Hopefully we can keep all these intact over the years. If you start to lose the shape of it, you could probably loosen the soil in the furrows and pull the bed shaper over it again. And it would leave the existing bed intact. It would just kind of square up your shoulders for you, which is some tillage, but it's better than the alternative which would be to knock it flat and then re-bed shape it. What we're just trying to do is keep the core bed intact. The furrows we know are gonna get compacted. As long as all the biology and the structure and the core part are still intact, then that's a benefit. You can see it's interesting if you look at this really weedy portion, there wasn't that piece of row fabric. And so that shows you what weed pressure is like. Imagine if we had just planted all our head lettuce into these beds, that would be the weed pressure that we're dealing with, which is why we're using these ground fabrics to kind of prevent that from germinating or to smother it if it does germinate. And then we get to this, which is pretty common. We try to minimize it to some degree, but this is typical plastic mulch that you'll lay out. Some farms do everything on plastic mulch because it, it creates a warmer environment and it smothers all your weeds for you, but it's single use. So when you're done with this harvest, this all gets balled up and it gets thrown in the landfill, but it's a lot of plastic use. And if you go to the Central Valley of California, it's like hundreds of square miles of bed after bed after bed of plastic mulch. I don't know if people are ever gonna move away from plastic culture. It's very common in a lot of farms because it's easy. And if you're farming wherever you can get easy, you go for it, which can be a problem, right? That's like the history of some of our problems and herbicides are easy, right? Plastic mulch is easy. So that's a tough one. You see that we're not just doing one thing here. We don't just have one method 
it's kind of a mishmash of pretty typical vegetable production and then us trying to push towards a different kind of method. Some failures, some successes, but ideally we'll just keep finding things that work and uh, keep expanding it out across the farm. And in places where we can't find a solution, potatoes, we'll just keep doing potatoes the way we do them, right? It's still nutrient dense, organic food. Maybe not as good for the soil, but that ground's still gonna get cover cropped. We're still gonna do minimum tillage on it. We're gonna do the best we can. I'm not gonna stop growing potatoes if I can't find a way to dig them without disturbing the soil. You know, you looked us up because we talked about regenerative ag and I just wanna say that, yeah, we're trying. We're by no means the poster child farm of regenerative agriculture. Uh, we're right in the middle. We have a foot in both worlds and that's okay. And I don't think it's black and white. I don't think there's any dogma. I don't think there's any rules at this point. It's like every farm's gotta figure out what works for them, but I think you gotta try. And we're trying to be very open and transparent about that. It's been a fun journey. I think there's potential for it. So I hope other people join in on that journey. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I want to say special thanks to Todd and Rebecca for inviting me onto their farm to share their story. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more like it in the future, please subscribe to my channel and let me hear from you in the comments. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Regenerative Journey. In this episode, welcome to Welcome to Regenerative Journey. Organic farming is heavily dependent on tillage. Steel in the soil. That's a dud. But we learned from regenerative agriculture that tillage is highly destructive. Organic farming is But regenerative agriculture teaches us that tillage is heavily destructive. Am I using heavily a lot? I don't, know, I don't even know what I'm saying. We hear from a farmer about the realities of transitioning from an organic operation to a regenerative organic operation. But regenerative agriculture teaches us that plowing and tillage is highly destructive of the soil. I don't even know how to say this anymore. I think I've got everything I need.